Hey, friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, in day two of our walkthrough of the Blockbuster 10.5 update, we're going to dig into the Step Sequencer, which is hands down my favorite addition to Logic. The Step Sequencer is a different way to approaching not just drums and percussion, but also pitched instruments as well. It's much different from the piano roll, where the piano roll shows us, you know, from left to right, all these different notes that we can play and we can play them at varying lengths, where the step sequencer is a grid where we plug in different notes or different instruments to play along a pattern. And I believe this tool is usable for just about anyone, whether you're working on electronic music, hip hop, or even rock, I would definitely use the patterns for working with drum kit designer for plugging in different drum performances. So number one, pattern regions. They're a brand new style of region where we have a drummer region, we have MIDI, we have audio, now we have patterns. And we can populate the tracks area with pattern regions either by right clicking in the tracks area and going down to create pattern region, or you can go up to the editor here. And now we have the step sequencer in view. We can also see the piano roll and the score. But with the step sequencer, the moment that I touch any of these steps, we create a new region, which is amazing. And then if we deselect that region and create another step, we've now populated another region. So we can very quickly just start piecing together a song without ever leaving the step editor. Now the step editor works in a linear fashion. It goes from left to right and it loops. We have a four bar loop and our one bar is repeated each time. So this kick hit, you can see it comes every single bar. And we can adjust the pattern length of our pattern using this global adjustment. We can go anywhere from 12 steps to 64. Let's just bump it up to 64 here, which has now changed the resolution in the sequencer to 32 steps. And we have two pages because this is quite a few steps, but we can adjust the width here. Just click on the wide button here and we've now switched it to a 16 step view. And now we have four pages to paw through. But the resolution of the pattern is not dictated by the region. So if we close the editor, if I just drag this out, we're not gonna end up with a longer pattern Instead, we're just gonna end up with a repeating pattern. Whatever we programmed in bars one through four, we're gonna see repeated throughout the region as we drag the right edge. And if we condense the right edge, all we're doing is hiding what already exists. Now, each instrument or pitch, depending on what style of instrument you're working with, so if we go to the bass here, open this up, we have pitches that line each row. And with the drums, we have different drum elements that line each row. Each row is made up of steps that you can enable or disable just by clicking on them. So we've disabled it, re-enabled, and the experience of using the step sequencer really boils down to working in loops, right? You loop a section and then you just start plugging notes in. And it's sort of a instrument that is giving feedback to you as you're programming. So you're hearing it on a repeated loop and you start placing different drum elements and you decide, oh, maybe the drum element that I place here and here don't sound great as I hear it on a loop. Let me just show you. So let me adjust the pattern length to 16 steps. And I'm gonna hit play and I'm just going to start plugging in notes just to see what happens here. So we'll check it out. I'll maybe do a four on the floor here. Okay, very simple. We're basically getting feedback as we're plugging in notes and depending on what style of music that you're shooting for, you know, you'll kind of get a sense for what should go where. Now at the moment, our step rate for the pattern is at 16th notes, but we can adjust this for all of the rows. So this is the length, this is the step rate. So if we switch the rate to, let's say 30 second notes, let's hear what this sounds like. A little crazy switch this back, but we can also adjust this on a per row basis. So maybe the hi-hats we want to double up on. Check it out. Double up on the claps. But we're going to keep this on a slower scale here. We can also adjust which direction each row plays in, which we can define on a per row or globally as well. In this case, our pattern is going in a forward trajectory, but we can have it go backwards instead. which is kind of crazy. We can also have it go back and forth from beginning to end and back to the beginning. 
We can also have it play randomly, which could yield some pretty interesting results. Now make sure to take a good look at the different options here at the top. We have different ways to edit. We also have different functions for transposing. Semitones and octaves, we're able to clear a step or a row, clear a pattern. We also have a pattern browser, which operates just like the library. We can set different patterns. We also have different templates based on scale. And these patterns could be for bass, they could be for drums or melodic instruments. So let's pick a different drum pattern here. Okay, so we've completely switched the pattern. And you can see the second page that's paging through here. We can also adjust the width. But I'm gonna switch back to the pattern that I had. You can also save within this browser as well though, so definitely keep this stuff in mind. My favorite feature about Step Sequencer, besides programming along a grid, which to me is just amazing, is the ability to adjust different edit modes of the different steps. So if we go over here to the top, we have step on and off. We also have this area here called velocity value. Now this is the edit mode selector. And at its current edit mode, we're able to adjust the velocity of different steps. So velocity is obviously how hard each of the elements hit. So let's turn this all the way up and you can do this on a per step basis, or you can adjust it on a global scale for the whole row using these sliders over here, the increment values. So check it out, let's bump up the kick. Let's reduce the kick. But beyond that, we have a whole variety of options. We can gate the different elements, which allows us to shorten the different notes or elements of our step patterns. So let's introduce a base pattern right now. And I'm going to introduce it using create pattern region. And this is different from the different drum kits. We actually have a stock selection of notes, but I have an idea of certain notes that I wanna use. So I can go up to this plus symbol here to add a new row of notes. So I can pick on a note basis. We'll discuss melodic rows in a moment. We can also set up automation for different parameters. I'm gonna select learn. And while learn mode is enabled, I'm going to actually play the notes I wanna play. Cool, so now I have C2, F sharp, C sharp, and C1. So let's get rid of the rest of these rows here because I'm not really interested in using them. I select this one. We can delete the row. We can also right click. And let's start programming some bass notes to this riff here. Check it out. I think I actually want to change this to D sharp one. So let's check it out here. So D sharp one. Cool, that works for me. So now let's dig into the gated values. If I select these and just tuck them down, check it out, you just pull up and down on the individual steps. Freaking awesome. Okay, let's now swap to tie because tie allows us to tie notes together. So we can actually tie these two or three notes together in sequence. Very cool. And then if we back out here, we can actually adjust the note on a per note basis. So for the drum kits, you would actually adjust the different drum elements. In this case, we're adjusting the notes for the bass. But let's go over to the drum kit here and set it up for note. Check it out. We're introducing a different drum element to this row. Okay, let's take a look at octave. We can actually adjust the octave of different pitch notes. Now, if I adjust the octave for this particular bass note, we've switched the row to a melodic row. And this seems to be related specifically to octave changes, but allows us to bump up and down octaves on a per note basis. Loop start and end allows us to actually adjust the beginning and end of a row. So if I Cinch this up, let's check it out. That's actually kind of sick. Okay, let me back that back out. Go back to the drums 
And let's now switch the mode to note repeat, which is, this is awesome. Now this allows us to repeat notes, not necessarily in the grid fashion. So let's take this hi-hat for example. A couple extra notes here, just so we can hear it. And then switch to note repeat and start bumping these up. So let's swap this to three notes. So sick. And then chance allows us to adjust the probability of a note actually being played. So I'm going to bump this down for all the hi-hats by quite a bit. I'm going to bump this down to 34%. So now 34% of the time, these hi-hat notes are going to play each time the pattern plays through. And after that, we can adjust the start offset of each note. So we can actually push it forward or backwards in time. So if we bump this, let's say in this direction, check it out. So this first hi-hat note is not playing on the grid. It's actually playing behind the grid. After that, we have step rate. So we can actually not only adjust the step rate for all the rows or individually for the rows, but also on a per note basis. So let me adjust just this clap note in terms of timing. And we're going to see that the playback is going to change because this is an eighth note clap now, and that's a 16th note. Which is pretty sick. And then if we go to the last one, we can skip notes just by clicking on them. And it's not going to mute them. It's actually going to literally skip over that particular cell. So it's going to go from here to here. The possibilities are freaking endless. I am so stoked on this. Okay, so let's swap back to the step on off. And we can also rotate steps, which means we can push all of the steps in this pattern either forward or back by a step. So. Let me just kind of back out of some of this stuff and let's push this back. So now you can see that the last note of this hi-hat was introduced to the beginning of the pattern. Let's hear it. We can also push it back. So now that first note has been shifted back to its original position. And we can also introduce other kit elements that are maybe not part of this step sequencer at the moment. So with this 808 Flex kit that has come with the new drum machine designer, you can see that there's a crash, there's a ride, toms, and all this stuff hasn't been introduced yet. So let's introduce the ride here. And I'll just plug it in across the board. we can also swap different elements as well. Maybe this kick sound, we don't necessarily want the kick, but we'd love to have a tom. So let's check out the low tom instead. It actually could be really cool if I introduce the other toms. And beyond that, we can also introduce automation. So you can see right here that we have these disclosure triangles. And when we open this disclosure triangle, just like the automation in the main tracks area, this shows us all the different edit modes that we've already manipulated. So we can adjust the velocity, the note repeat. We can see everything that we've adjusted and adjust it without having to swap between these modes all the time. But we can also manipulate automation within the step sequencer as well. So let's go to the bass track here. And let's just introduce the EQ. And I'll turn on the low pass filter here. Okay, cool. So let's swap right here and then go to the plus symbol, automation, channel EQ, high cut frequency. And let's now go back to the edit mode and we're going to swap loop star end for velocity value. And value is indicative of automation values. So let's now start introducing notes. And let's just make sure to step on off. Cool. And let's just start manipulating this. So swap it around. That'll probably be good enough. Check it out. Now the last piece to the step sequencer is the inspector, which allows us to manipulate different elements of the patterns of the rows and of the steps. 
Now, each of these inspectors already have a lot of parameters that we've already dug through. You know, we can adjust the playback mode, we can adjust the pattern length, the step rate, we can do this on a per row basis as well. For the pattern inspector, we can actually adjust the swing of a pattern. So let's mute this for now, swap up here to the drum loop. Let's switch the swing to maybe 80%. This is gonna be weird. Cool. We can also adjust the pattern key. So let's bring in the bass here and we'll swap the key for, I don't know, E. Pretty cool. Scale quantize, we can also quantize based on different scale modes. And finally, if you're ready to save any of these patterns, if you've hit on a pattern that you are just over the moon about and you think is awesome, you can either save the pattern, you can save a pattern within the pattern browser here by going to the gear, you can save the pattern or the entire instrument as a template. So it'd be without the pattern, but all of the instrument elements if you map one out. Let's save the pattern here. I'm just gonna call this Chris. 808, but we can also create an Apple loop as well that will be a pattern specific style of Apple loop. So let's just drag this right in to the Apple loop browser. Cool, so we'll call this Chris 808 again, call it a loop, create. Let's now search for the Chris loop. Now let's now introduce it into the project. Cool, so now we have the entire channel strip for this drum kit, plus the pattern, and dig into it. Awesome, we have a brand new Apple loop of our pattern. That was a ton of information to get through. I try to keep these as short as I possibly can. I do hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new posts, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.